when uh, people are not listening to your music, how do you keep yourself motivated? Well, you know, you, you don't... I don't think songwriters ever really... I mean, you know, art is more valid as it's shared and connected to, but I don't think any songwriters kind of do it writing a song thinking somebody's going to listen to it. You just, it's do it, you do it because what you do, you have the drive. You sort of can't help it if that's what you do, you do it. And I don't think anybody, my big heroes, like Joni Mitchell, people like that, I mean, I think they've just written, so it's what they do, they can't sort of help themselves to do it. So I do it because I love it and, and I enjoy it. And even though the records, the last records haven't sold as well, I, I'm still doing it. Like I said, the, the break between Walking in Avalon and now is really more because of personal reasons, but, um, you know, I've always made an album like every three or four years. I'm just kind of slow, but, you know, and this new album, I mean, I made Carlisle, I made the Christmas album, it's something I want to do, I'm going to make a new record, because um, I just enjoy doing it. I don't expect, I don't really expect to have another mainstream hit, but, um, you know, it's, it's fun, it's what I do, and I don't have to do anything else, and, and like I said, I still really enjoy it more than ever. In fact, playing in concerts, I'm enjoying more than ever because I'm getting older and I realize it won't last forever, so I'm, I really enjoy the process. It's, it's, you know, throughout my life it's been the constant, whether I've had, through my upbringing as a child, problems I had at home or whatever, and then, you know, my personal problems in my life, like marriages and stuff, music's always been the constant, so it's been my solace and sort of survival, so I, I clearly want to hang on to it and be connected to it. But it'd be great if one of the records connected again and had a big success, but it's not why, it's never been why I do it, because it would be stupid to do that because there's no promise of that. I mean, I had some success, but... There's so many great artists out in the world who are making music and stuff who really have very little chance of, I mean, given you know how remote success is for most people, they're just driven to do it. Especially jazz musicians. I mean, they mostly play just because they love to play. Most of them starve to death. Okay. Why did you uh, let yourself push into the rock uh, corner uh, back then by the record label? Well, I grew up. Uh, I mean, when I was in Texas. Where I grew up, you know, my peers were like Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, Eric Johnson, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, his brother Jimmy. So I was, and I and I liked a lot of rock music like Jeff Beck and Zeppelin and that kind of stuff, Cream. So I was a tra I liked that kind of music, and I was playing more rock stuff back then. I was also into people like Zappa. Um, so I I have you know I play the electric guitar and have have that kind of technique, and as a songwriter, it's a little unusual. So I think they just wanted to showcase that part of my you know, music as a guitar player and wanted to make them more rock record. Like an example would be John Mayer. I mean, John's one of the few pop artists, singer-songwriter type pop artists who can actually play well. I mean, you know, he plays really well. And that's not a criticism of someone like a Jackson Brown or, or someone like that. But, you know, Jackson's an amazing songwriter, folk kind of guitar player, whereas John Mayer's like a, you know, pop songwriter who's a really accomplished player. So I think the record company thought maybe they could expand the market by sort of exploiting that part of my style. You'd have to see me in concert to know, but I, mean, I played the guitar solos like I'm Ride Like the Wind and that kind of stuff, so they thought they may maybe they could expand the bass, but they were, I think they were wrong. But, you know, it was a good shot, because if I could have expanded it and made my bass larger than just the pop audience, it would have been a good thing, but it just didn't work. Like I said, the particular single they picked, Charm of the Snake, was just too bizarre for pop radio, and I didn't have the image for rock radio. You know, I'd already kind of established myself as kind of a more of a pop songwriter and you know, yeah. I didn't bite the head off rats or anything, so <laughs> that wasn't what they were looking for.